Okay, spring has definitely sprung here in the south of England and everything is lovely and fresh and green outside. So we've been out this morning and we picked some stinging nettles. We're going to make nettle soup. But first, let's just go and have a look at picking the nettles. Stinging nettles here. This is the same place I picked my ground elder last week for our wild herb omelette. And uh, as you can see, there are lots and lots of very fresh and nice looking stinging nettles here. So we're going to get in here and pick some nettle tops. I'm going to pick them from a little way in from the edge because obviously dogs get walked along here and I'd rather have the cleaner ones. But we've got to be careful because I've got the shorts on today. So we'll have to be careful how we get in there. I imagine I'm probably going to get stung today, just a little bit. And just one other thing, you probably shouldn't attempt this without a glove. It is possible to pick nettles without a glove, but it's just easier to use one. And all I'm picking is like the first four to six leaves at the top. I don't want to get too much stem because the stems get quite fibrous. And so we really are only interested in the soft, tender leaves. Okay, and that'll do for the nettle soup we're making today. Now, <laughs> I did get myself stung on the leg. Um, now one thing, it's interesting, if we just have a sniff of those, they've got a kind of a gingery spiciness to them, which is really quite nice. So, and that will come through in the soup we're going to make today. And you may have noticed from the background noise, we're not very far from civilization here, so you don't have to go very far to pick this fantastic wild vegetable. So, stinging nettle soup. This is actually a really tasty soup, suitable for vegetarians. Actually, you can probably make a vegan version of that. We'll talk about that as we go through. But it's really, really nutritious. Nettles are packed with nutrients. They're packed with minerals and all of that good stuff you're meant to have. So I picked about a colander full of nettles. This is gonna be a bit of an imprecise recipe, but I will put the weight of these nettles on the screen right now. We're also gonna have in our soup an onion, a couple of potatoes, and a vegetable stock cube. So let's get started. So we'll start off by just finely dicing this onion. Now there are a hundred different ways to dice an onion. It actually doesn't matter how precise we are today because this is all going to be blended. So we just need to cut it small enough that it's going to cook nicely. certainly do. Okay, so let's get these onions cooking because we need to cook these down gently and slowly. So over here at the cooker I'm just going to put maybe 15 grams of butter in that pan and we'll get that going over a low heat and we're going to put our onions in the pan as well. just want these to cook really nice and slow and just soften and sweeten 
but I don't really want them to caramelise too much and I don't want that butter to burn. So we're going to keep an eye on this and we're going to keep it nice and low just until it all softens and cooks through. Now of course if you're making this as a vegan version you do something else instead of butter, maybe some olive oil or something like that. Now the nettles themselves need very little preparation because I was quite judicious when I was out there picking them and so I've only picked nice clean intact nettle tops but I am just going to give them a quick rinse because nettles where they've got these hairy stinging spines all over them they do tend to trap a little bit of dust and dirt so I'm going to give them a good rinse I'm actually going to use tongs to move them about while I'm rinsing them because obviously they will sting me until they're cooked because they are covered in these tiny stinging hairs now you can handle nettles without being stung and I will demonstrate as long as you grasp them really quickly like that and crush those little hairs you won't get stung it's only if you brush against them lightly that those hairs will pierce your skin and deliver their poison into your skin. And we're going to leave them to drain because they will trap quite a bit of water in there. It doesn't matter because we're making soup but I'm going to leave these to drain so that the uh, water and any dust runs off them. There we go, that's probably enough of a rinse. Back over at the pan, the onions are starting to soften and you can see they're starting to go translucent there in the pan. We're just going to keep them moving around because I want them to cook evenly. Definitely don't want them to go crispy and I don't really even want them to caramelise. So while those onions are cooking I'm just going to make up the stock. Now I'm using a vegetable stock cube today so just for ease and convenience. You could obviously make your own stock. You could use chicken stock here if you don't want a vegetarian soup or any other kind of stock you like. You can make your own homemade vegetable stock. But just for convenience sake today I'm using vegetable stock and I'm going to make that up to 500 ml with warm water. Right now the potatoes either one large potato or two smallish ones and we're just going to peel these I'm actually just going to add in another potato because I had to cut a big chunk out of that one and also because it, they are a little bit on the small side. So as I say this recipe is a little bit variable. I'm not really going to put quantities on the screen because you just make this up as you go along. Really you can't go wrong with this, you just uh, figure out the proportions and it doesn't matter if you get it a little bit different. So there we go, just a kind of handful of potatoes. So the potatoes we will dice up quite small. because I want them to cook fairly quickly. Okay, so again, doesn't matter how neat and tidy we are with that, as long as we've got roughly the same size of pieces, because this is all gonna go in the pan and get cooked down. So back over here at the pan, you can see those onions have gone lovely and soft now and cooked all the way through. And that's as far as I want to take them. So we'll just put those pieces of potato in there. Little tip somebody gave me on a video last week was use the back of the knife when you're scraping things into the pan and then you keep your blade sharp. And then we're just going to put the stock in there as well. And now we can turn the heat up and bring that to a boil. Now we may add more liquid in a moment, but let's just see how we go. So we're going to put a lid on that and bring it up to a simmer. Okay, so that's come to boil now. We're going to turn down the heat and just let it simmer. 
until those potatoes have softened. See it's just bubbling away gently, that's all it needs. Right now those potatoes are starting to soften up now so we're able to crush them against the side of the pan and they're starting to break up which is great. So nettles are going to go in now and then the stinging nettles are just all going to go in on top of those potatoes and that looks like quite a lot of nettles but it's remarkable how, how much they will cook down. Just press them down a little bit like that. Put the lid back on and give it about five minutes. We don't want to overcook those because they will go a horrible colour. We want, to, want them still to be green and fresh and vibrant. Okay, a couple of minutes in, you can see the nettles have cooked right down, but I'm just going to give them a poke just to get them immersed so that they cook evenly. Okay, now that is as cooked as it needs to be. You can see the nettles are still nice and fresh and bright green, but they are completely wilted down and soft and ready to be blended up. So we'll turn the heat off. And then we're going to go in with a hand blender and blend that to a completely smooth consistency. Okay, now at this stage, just to add a little bit more creaminess, I'm just going to put a splash of milk in there. Now, obviously, if you're making the vegan version of that, you'd use something else. You might use soya milk, or you might put a spoonful of peanut butter in there, maybe. Okay, that's done. So let's get this to the table and taste it. Okay, so let's serve up some of this nettle soup. I don't know how green that looks on the camera, but it's such a vibrant, deep, fresh green colour. Really has got the colour of springtime in there. So I'm just going to have a bit of black pepper on top. Some people will swirl a bit of cream in there. I'm not actually going to do that today, but I am going to put a little grind of nutmeg on the top. So I'm just going to serve that with a nice chunk of rye bread. There we go. And a bit of butter on the bread, of course. <coughs> but anyway, let's taste this soup and see what we've got. Wow. It's just really, really delicious. There is something about nettles that tastes expensive. And so I would really encourage you to get out there, pick some stinging nettles and make yourself some nettle soup. This really is delicious. I was put off for a long time before I ever tried nettle soup because I thought it was gonna be bitter or something like that, but it just tastes fantastic. And it, at, the only way I can describe it is it tastes expensive. Mmm, delicious. Let's just dunk a bit of buttery bread in there as well and try it like that. Mm. That <laughs> words are starting to fail me here actually because that's just so tasty. So there we go, that is nettle soup. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon. <laughs>